Um, our next presenter will be Chris O'Neill, and his project is titled Prosodic Expression in Two Variants of Primary Progressive Aphasia. Go ahead, Chris. Okay, so primary progressive aphasia is a speech and language disorder. And the ability to produce and comprehend speech and language involves communication between the right and left hemispheres. The left hemisphere is responsible for verbal articulatory functions, such as sentence construction and word pronunciation. In contrast, the right hemisphere is responsible for prosodic functions. And prosody is the melody of speech that involves changes in pitch, rhythm, and volume. So primary progressive aphasia is a neurodegenerative disorder that affects the left hemisphere. Research currently indicates that tau proteins may be a potential cause of the disorder, and currently there are three variants of PPA described. So we focused on two of the variants in this study, the semantic variant and the logopenic variant. In the semantic variant, atrophy tends to occur in the anterior temporal lobe, and the semantic variant also results in impaired single word comprehension and the ability to identify common objects. So for example, if you were to show a semantic patient a pen and ask them to identify what it is, they would str struggle to identify that as a pen. Um, the temporal parietal junction is the site of degeneration in the logopenic variant. In terms of speech functions, logopenic patients tend to make phonetic errors when identifying things. So for example, you might show them a picture of a cat and ask them to identify it but instead of saying cat, they say bat or rat, so they substitute that first letter. Despite the differences mentioned, it's still challenging to distinguish between PPA subtypes in a clinical setting. However, recent observations indicate that semantic PPA may present with a unique prosodic profile. So what do we mean by that? Well, Part of a speech evaluation typically involves a motor speech task which involves patients to repeat syllables such as pa. So many patients hold a steady pitch while performing this task. However, some semantic patients exhibit increased pitch variation when completing the task. So instead of hearing a stable pitch such as pa 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 pa, semantics display a pitch where you hear pa 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 pa. So there's a lot of fluctuation. We believe this may be the result of release phenomenon, which proposes that damage to one structure results in dysregulated activity between the damaged structure and healthy structures. So atrophy in the left hemisphere allows the right hemisphere to influence speech to a greater degree. So our objective was to understand episodic differences between PPA subtypes with the ultimate goal of developing new diagnostic screens. So based on clinical observations and release phenomenon, we hypothesized that semantic variants would display greater pitch variation compared to logopenic variants and mild cognitive impairment patients. And mild cognitive impairment was included so we can compare PPA subtypes to another neurodegenerative disease. So patients were recording were recorded repeating pata ka. The physician's voice was then removed from the recording and the task of interest was isolated from the rest of the recording. We then used prot acoustic analysis to examine ch changes in pitch measured as fundamental frequency. And then if you look at the right over here, this is what we would see during our analysis. So this blue line represents a, <clears throat> um, a visual of pitch changes over time. 
patients also completed the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, which assesses cognitive functions, as well as the Functional Activity Questionnaire, which assesses the ability to function independently. It's also important to note that we were only able to use PA because of too much noise and the TA and CA segments. So when we looked for differences between diagnostic groups, we found that age and disease severity differed between groups. And disease severity included both the MOCA, the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, and the FAQ. So we then examined whether there were any relationships between these variables and pitch. There wasn't a relationship between pitch and age. However, there was a relationship between disease severity and pitch variation. So greater disease severity was associated with greater pitch variation. However, this is different from what is commonly observed in Alzheimer's disease, where greater severity is associated with less variation. We use the coefficient of variation to compare pitch variation and found that semantic patients displayed greater variation than logopedic patients and those compared to MCI. And there are two outliers on our graph over here. And even after <clears throat> adjusting for um, MOCA and FAQ, the semantics still differed from the logopenics However, they did not differ from the MCIs. So in the future, we, <coughs> sorry. Um, so in conclusion, semantic patients exhibited increased pitch variation compared to logopenic patients and MCI patients. Degeneration is associated with the anterior temporal lobe and Degeneration in that area may result in greater prosodic expression compared to atrophy within the temporal parietal junction. So these differences could serve as a new diagnostic screen following further analysis. So our study was retrospective and in the future we'd like to run a prospective study so we could control for more variables. And we would also like to use voxel-based morphometry to quantify neurodegeneration and associate that with pitch variation. Finally, I'd like to thank my capstone committee and the entire MHA program. Any questions? Thank you, Chris. Um, not sure we have any questions yet. So in this study, you weren't um, actually looking at any uh, neurodegeneration associated with these patients. Is that correct? So that was our plan until campus got shut down. So we were planning on doing voxel-based morphometry, and we're still planning on doing that in the near future. Okay. Um, one person was asking about the number of patients. So we had um, 25 patients in our sample, seven semantics, nine logopenics, and nine MCIs. All right. Thank you. Uh, 